probably been hearing a lot about DeepSeek, such as how it's caused a major stock market crash, it's causing a total disruption of the AI market, how it could put ChatGBT, Google, Microsoft out of business, and that it's setting up China for economic world domination. But what exactly is DeepSeek? Why is it such a big deal? And what do we really need to be worried about? As a patent attorney with an AI heavy practice that regularly sees the cutting edge of AI innovation, I'm gonna give you the insider information on everything you need to know about DeepSeek. So what exactly is DeepSeek? So what people are actually referring to is the R1 reasoning model released on January 20th by the DeepSeek company. And it's really just a chat bot. Specifically, it's an LLM like ChatGBT, Claude, or Gemini. Um, and what you do is just like in those LLMs, you put in prompts and you can put in things like documents, uh, you can put in images, and you get responses and you can have a, a, a conversation with the LLM based on these documents and prompts. So DeepSeek currently, it can't work with uh, outputting images or video, um, but it is currently free to users, unlike uh, LLMs like ChatGPT, where you have a limited amount of free use, but then have to pay for a subscription. It's also less expensive for API use. And so by API, I mean, application programming interface. And what that is, is so for instance, there's a lot of companies that are creating their own AI products and they don't have their own LLMs, but what they do is they use this API to access ChatGBT or another model and do that AI processing for them. And they pay on, for instance, the number of questions they ask or the number of prompts they input or you know computing time things like that so they have to pay a subscription or they have to pay a licensing fee to companies like ChatGBT. but apparently deep seek it's a lot cheaper to use their api as a backbone for your app which is making a lot of companies think twice about paying a ton of money to ChatGBT or to google or to microsoft to license their LLMs or, and get access to their API. So why is there so much hype around uh, DeepSeek? So one, it caused a huge uh, stock market tank recently. So just seven days after it re was released, it caused Nvidia's stock to plummet by 17%. And that's a loss of nearly $600 billion in market value. And that is actually a record for the largest single day loss of a stock in market history. So yeah, $600 billion gone in market value in one day, kind of a big deal. Also caused a big sell-off of a bunch of other AI companies, which has really been causing a lot of problems in the stock market, especially as uh, as of today, uh, when this video was recorded, there's a lot of turmoil in the markets uh, because of DeepSeek. It also became the number one downloaded app in the Apple App Store, surpassing ChatGPT as the number one downloaded app. And this means that DeepSeek is likely on a path to be the fastest growing and fastest adopted app ever. So this, this is a really big deal. ChatGPT got huge headlines by being adopted so fast and DeepSeek may actually surpass ChatGPT. So what makes DeepSeek so special? Well, early reports are saying that it has matching, if not better performance than comparable models by say like ChatGPT, Google, Microsoft, etc., and it's reporting that it has done this way faster and way cheaper. So specifically, they're saying it took them two months to train their new model on a budget of $5.5 million, that's it. And it only took them 2,000 NVIDIA chips to train this model. It's also free compared to being a paid subscription and to use its API as in like to use it as a backbone for your own software, it is apparently 20 to 50 times cheaper to use the API. So it's way cheaper and free for consumer use, which is a, which is a really big deal. It is also open source, which is a really big deal and something that a lot of these other models aren't doing that are the market leaders right now. So what this means is that theoretically people could download a copy of it. They could run it on their own hardware. Obviously, it's something that would require a lot of computing power, not something that anyone could really easily do, but it's something that companies could potentially do, and it could create a way for there to be a lot more innovation, as I'll talk about kind of later on. So let's compare this to uh, ChatGBT4. So for instance, in terms of the numbers, it took ChatGBT4 3.5 months to grow their model. It cost them $100 million. 
took 25,000 NVIDIA chips, and they still have a paid subscription for premium use, a way more expensive API, and they're not open source. So in terms of percentages, that's less than 60% of the time, 5.5% of the cost, and only 8% of the chips to train the model, which is pretty huge in a lot of ways. That's, that's a major, major disruption in how AI has been trained and how AI, AI is gonna be monetized and how much AI costs. So what are some reasons why it's so disruptive? Why is it causing people to freak out? Well, one of the things is it's challenging the assumed big tech dominance. So this was done by a relatively new Chinese startup, not a big company, not really, really well funded, and it was able to create a comparable product a lot faster and a lot quicker than these big, well-known tech companies who've sort of been around since the beginning. Um, and they were able to do it so that they can have a model where it's going to be free for consumer use, cheaper for the API, and it's going to be open source. So it's really gonna be game-changing. And this makes it so the investors are worried that big tech does not have as much of a monopoly as they originally thought. So for instance, Maybe we don't need as many chips to train AIs as we thought. And this is not good news for the big chip makers who have seen massive explosions in, in demand because of training uh, AIs and so much demand that they haven't been able to really keep up with it, which has create mar created market dominance for a lot of these companies. Um, and two, maybe you don't need a hundred million dollars and be a huge company with tons of resources and tons of employees and have the top minds in the world to be able to create high end top of market uh, AI products. Maybe that's not necessary. Again, I mean, this is sort of an unknown company with people who weren't these top names in the field doing this work who were able to create this product that was as uh, supposedly as good cheaper and faster. And maybe the current way of monetizing AI models is not gonna work. So with generative AI, where you have a, a, a premium subscription model and you, you have to pay a bunch of money to access the API, so you can use that as a backbone for your uh, AI products, well, maybe that's not gonna work very well when you have other companies who can do it way cheaper and these big tech companies are gonna have to think of new ways to monetize their, their AI. Also, maybe it's not a good idea to have things be black box like a lot of these companies. So again, having it be open source is really potentially going to change things. The fact that anybody can see what's going on on the back end, knows what's happening, can update and improve things, creates sort of a, an ecosystem where a lot of people can contribute and, and really create innovations using this platform. You know, maybe it changes the way that people think about keeping things proprietary and black box uh, like these big companies are, are currently doing. Also, it keeps, it, it, this is really making people worried that the U.S. may not have AI supremacy that it really thought it had. The, the, the U.S. was really considered the, the AI powerhouse of the world because we, you know, we have the, the smartest people, we have the biggest companies and the most resources and, you know, places like China are never going to be able to come to parity with us and never going to, are never going to be able to compete. But this has really thrown that into question. So this makes China and potentially other countries, they may be able to be big players in the AI game, right? So it creates economic concerns because it could really create a lot of uh, market dominance for these companies and for China. Also national security concerns. So suddenly now nation states and then individuals may have access to really powerful AIs so that they can do things that are sort of weaponized that could be used to influence elections, uh, promote uh, things, you know, things like disinformation cause real problems and havoc around the world potentially. So there's national security concerns and also just general data privacy concerns. It's kind of like with TikTok where people have concerns that there is, because there are servers on Chinese soil or it's a Chinese owned company, that could potentially mean that these companies are gonna be using your data that you put into these LLMs. So there's a lot of concerns uh, about dominance of China and potentially other companies and that the US isn't the number one uh, AI country anymore. Also, it being low, low, low open source and low cost, that is a really big game changer and something that is really uh, kind of freaking people out. The idea that you can have unlimited use by consumers and that the a a using the API as the backbone for AI products is gonna be potentially 20 to 50% cheaper. 
that is huge. I mean, as it is, the AI companies are were having a hard time monetizing things, but if suddenly the subscription to the API is gonna be 20 to 50% cheaper for competitors for a comparable product, that's gonna be a huge product. Um, so open source is gonna allow individual companies to host these LLMs themselves, and this can be a lot more cost effective. Yeah, yeah it requires big computers, and a lot of investment in these computers, but once they've made that investment, it makes it more cost effective in the long term. They don't have to rely on a company like uh, like OpenAI to access ChatGPT. They can host it themselves and they can improve it. They can customize it to what they need for their uses. And because it creates an ecosystem where there's all these people working on the same problems, this can be shared open source. Like there's open bulletin boards where people say, hey, I've been working on this and this makes things more efficient or for this type of use, here's how you do it, right? So it can really create more innovation and really fast improvement with AI, which is really going to be changing things. So should we be freaking out about this? Well, yeah, there's, there's a lot to be concerned about. Stock markets are melting down. The business plans of AI services and chip makers are in question. The world order of AI dominance is in question. And we have the issue that powerful AI may now, or, or at very least will soon be in the hands of nation states and potentially small companies or individuals, which could be a huge problem. It could be used to shut off power grids and plant disinformation and influence elections and scam people out of money and could cause a lot of problems and negative disruption to be weaponized and you know just really cause a lot of problems. You should not freak out about this. There's a lot of things going to be changing here and things to keep an eye on. Um, one of the things is that reports that the faster about faster time and lower cost, there's they haven't been independently verified. So for instance, it may have cost more to actually train the LLM model. It may have taken more time. And so we don't really know what costs and what time is being attributed to this. So it could have cost way more than $5.5 million. It could have taken way longer than two months if you start adding you know, other time to kind of ramp up, training other models that were a baseline that were built upon. So, you know, take some of those things with a grain of salt. At the same time, there is likely a big game-changing improvement in efficiency and cost. And so I'm not trying to downplay that and say that, well, this is all fake news and that uh, this isn't a big deal. It actually costs way more and it's not as good. Um, you know, th there's likely an improvement. Another part of that is sort of the quality assessment that it's early on in that as well. And that the earlier reports are saying, hey, this is as good, maybe potentially better than comparable models by ChatGBT, Google, uh, Microsoft, companies like that. Um, but really, it's going to take a long time for people to really run these these new LLMs from DeepSeek through their paces and uh, try them out against the benchmarks and really kind of hack them in a lot of ways. There could be a lot of weaknesses in terms of, say, like data, you know, data security and privacy or ways that, you know, it doesn't really do well in certain domains. It takes a while to really test those things. So keep an eye on that moving forward and just sort of see, you know, is it really as good and robust as people are talking about? But at the same time, you know, it's even if it's just as good or even if it's close to being as, as good and there are really the, the costs and time benefits, it's still really game changing. But also keep in mind, competition is actually a good thing for AI. And so this isn't gonna you know, destroy the markets and cause tons of problems. So for instance, some companies and investments may struggle in the short term. That absolutely will happen. But that is totally typical in emerging markets like this. Think back to the dot-com boom and bust. There were all these companies coming out and everyone was doing their innovative dot-com things and trying stuff out. Companies came and went. There was boom and bust where you know these companies would you know make billions of dollars on paper and then would go out of business overnight. We're gonna see that moving forward with AI and we're really in the beginning stages of things. So think about companies like Netscape Navigator and Alta Vista and AOL. You know, some of you may not even know those names, but back in the day, they were some of the big internet companies, right? Now you think of like AOL and Yahoo and you kinda you kinda laugh about that, right? They're kind of holding companies and they're largely irrelevant. But you know, these companies come and go and that's gonna happen just as much in the AI space. So keep an eye out for that. This is normal and we shouldn't be that surprised. There are gonna be major paradigm shifts coming and things are gonna change and things will you know, become more efficient and things will become better. 
And so don't be totally surprised about these things. Another thing to consider is that it's positive because energy consumption was seen as a huge bottleneck in AI. So for instance, to train LMs was hugely electricity uh, intensive, took a lot of resources in terms of like cooling things, it took a lot of water, just a lot of very resource intensive. And that was seen for a long time as being that's going to be the thing that's going to hold us back from growing AI is going to be the physical thing. It's not going to be the software. It's not going to be, you know, the chips and things like that. It's going to be the infrastructure that we're not going to be able to have. So this may be actually a positive thing. We may be able to grow better and faster and more productive AI and have it be something that is more ubiquitous that more people can use a lot cheaper if it's going to be more efficient in terms of energy cost, which was again was seen something that was really going to hold things back. Also open source and lower cost, that really is going to accelerate innovation. So we're going to get better AI a lot sooner when people can work together and where things aren't closed. So, you know, being somebody who works in, in patents a lot of times, you know, we have a lot of companies who have trade secrets, which is not necessarily a good thing, right? Because all these companies are working independently. That's why the patent system is there to promote innovation because everything then is public. So having an open source, it's in some ways even better because there's going to be a lot of things that are just going to be out there. They're going to be public domain. So it's really going to create a lot of innovation a lot faster. Well then, okay, what are some things that you actually should keep an eye on, that you should be concerned about? I wanna give you a couple of things that you can do here. So one is data privacy related to Chinese-based LLMs. And there's certainly a concern that using something that's a Chinese-based company where there are servers on Chinese soil, this could be data that could be stolen from you or used in ways that you don't want to. It's sort of analogous to what's going on with TikTok where there's concern that the, the government is using that data in ways that people don't want it to be used. Same thing could be with the LLM, but really honestly, that's gonna be with any LLM. You don't really know what is going on with, with what yeah, on, on the back end if it's not an LLM that you have yourself, right? So for instance, even with something like ChatGBT, you could be putting all this proprietary information, all this personal information, you don't really know what that's gonna be used for, right? That could be used to train the AI, the AI and then somehow people could figure out how to hack it and then spit that information out. So you should always assume that any sort of LLM that you're using, that information that you're putting in there isn't always guaranteed to be secure. So whether that's you're concerned about the Chinese government or whether you're concerned about a, a company like OpenAI or Microsoft or Google, always think about that. It's not just a Chinese thing, but always think about you know the, the data that you put in there isn't necessarily private and could potentially be used against you or used in ways that you don't want it to be used. Also, this is definitely going to disrupt AI markets. This will absolutely change things, but it is just the start. So strap in and be ready because, you know, there's going to be a lot of change a lot faster. You're going to be need, you're going to need to be ready for things to change, uh, you know, not on a yearly decade basis. It's going to be monthly or weekly or even daily at times when there's going to be major innovation. So be ready for that. Be ready for things to change really quickly and be ready to adapt have technology literacy that is really important so that you're not left behind um, especially important for business professionals the people who are going to be left behind as business professionals those are going to be the people who don't adapt and use AI as a tool you, you don't want to worry as much about AI replacing people AI is going to replace the people who don't use AI AI as a tool, who don't effectively know how to use AI as a tool. An example that I always give is, well, you know, what about all the law firms that don't use spell check or email? Well, those companies don't exist because they can't exist. They would have been left behind had they not used these tools. And AI is going to be the same way. You're going to have to have AI literacy if you're going to survive in the business environment or just in the world in general. It's going to be become something that's that's really important and essential to understand. Think about people who don't understand how to use basic computers or email or how to text. Those people are left behind and you're going to be left behind as well if you don't have AI literacy.